somebody in my chat was just like, you should play Kevin McLeod. <laughs> and I was like, I, who, who is that? I felt bad because I was like, I, I had no clue who you were. And I type in your name and I'm like, no way he has made this much music <laughs> that everybody on the internet knows. You're you're all over the internet at this yeah. point. Does that does that randomly hit you while you're like drinking coffee? Uh, on a, on a yeah, out, out mowing the lawn. And you're like, geez, I wonder if I'm above Taylor Swift on TikTok this month. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, like when when did you start getting into music or when did you really start taking this serious <laughs> as a as a career? Oh, uh, that's an easy answer. Never. I don't. <laughs> it snuck up on me, and I've never really taken it that seriously. Uh, Which is I perfect. just like, you know, find things that are wrong in the world and fix them. And if you can do it by writing music, that's great. That's perfect. That's perfect. And I'm, I'm a, did you start with making your music free, or did you start by charging people or like when did that was like we were like nah these are all free this everything is free that's coming out <laughs> <laughs> so like i got some gigs in college that were pay for gigs um and you yeah, know i started out with all pay for gigs and then like you know i, I get some cues rejected here and there I'm like oh these are still good yeah nobody paid for them we'll put them up for free because uh, the internet is starving for content right now can you imagine yeah. Living in the 90s when the <laughs> internet was starved for content? No. no. <laughs> well, it was, a, it was a thing that happened. I have a big art background, um, and that's kind of what built up my, like, gaming community was because, like, I, I had free time to edit. I had free time to do some graphic design stuff. And, like, now we're moving to a point where, yes, like, we want to make mods. We want to make things that other gamers can use in yeah. their games because, I mean we all play video games like like yeah. the more people i meet i'm like dude video games ev everybody has a game of some sort that they play and to move on to that what what games do you play kevin i've i've seen you i actually seen you post a few like asking your community what games your community's playing what are you what are you playing right now uh right now it's still cyberpunk that's that's crazy did you play it when it first launched i yes i did Okay, and, did and you... I, I loved it. <laughs> really? Okay, okay. <laughs> so did, and so... then it got better and better, and yes. it's like now it's just ridiculously awesome. Okay, that's what that was literally what I was gonna ask you because my first experience when I played it, I had a ton of bugs. Literally to the point I had to restart my save because I made it to a point where it, like I couldn't progress because there was just a bug just oh, destroying yeah. me. So I. I pushed through it though because I was in yep. the same camp where I was like, there, there is something really, really good here yeah. that I just want to keep playing it. What what makes that game stand out over most of like that isn't a new like an act crime action type right. free roam is not a new concept, but what made Cyberpunk like no, this is this is it. The the thing that really that I loved about it, the that I I mean, you've seen it here and there, but like you always know where you are. You, like, there's no loading screens to go into uh, a thing. It is free range, and it it's you know not super time dependent. Yep. And like, you want to go into an alleyway and look at the garbage? <laughs> you, okay. You can. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess my thing about cyberpunk, and I, I've said this to my community too, is it does feel like there is still more to do and the game that's on the horizon that that i feel like is going to take it there is gta and multiplayer is a really big thing <laughs> multiplayer well obviously hey, right so uh, I mean, have, but... have you thought about that playing through cyberpunk like are they are they missing something where you're like it it could be perfect if they added this oh it could be perfect uh <laughs> no, nothing is ever well nothing yet is ever that. right very true very true. but um no there, there's there's just times when like 
That's what I need. I need some cyberpunk today. I, I think it's going to have some longevity. It's going to be sort of the last of its class of these kinds of yes, giant human built uh, running on game engines things. And yep. I think people are going to like it for a while. Um. So you you kind of look. I got my notes right here. You kind of you kind of you kind of jogged the next question of of human built versus, <laughs> <laughs> versus AI stuff. Um, yeah, my community has dove head first into this AI stuff. One of the first AI games we've played is uh, it was a game where you you had a like a dungeon master, like Dungeons and Dragons. There's a dungeon master. The AI is the dungeon master. That right. was like our first like, oh, wow. Like there's a lot of potential in <laughs> AI games. Like part of me, like I said, part of me, I'm I'm all for it. Part of me, I'm extremely terrified of what <laughs> what can happen in the in the gaming industry like have have you had a strong opinion or strong side you're on with it right now uh i'm definitely using the ai in every way that i can okay uh, on the games that i'm making now <laughs> yeah so you you make uh, your own games ish Working what? on it. I'm making really? experiences. <laughs> oh, um, let's go. The, the AI tends to be way better at writing dialogue than I am. Uh, you know, you, you give it a few examples and it can just keep that up all day long and it never switches into other characters. As long as you build your characters, character by yeah. character, GPT can understand them and, and do all the things. And then, you know, you you push the button and crank it out to 11 labs or other uh, speech synthesis stuff. And so you can actually hear and talk to the people that you're talking to. Yeah, I'm glad you, I'm glad you brought that up. We got the Kevin vouch because right now we, <laughs> we're, we're working on a Roblox server right now. Um, we're building like original code in it. We're building original characters in it. Um, we're getting into creating our own mods with our own coding and different things in it. And I've said this to my community multiple times. I don't think I would have been able to get this far if it wasn't for AI help. I, I, I'm very busy day to day. Like I, I have work. I have a, like a right. family. Like I have things I have to do day to day. Being a creative in this May 12th, 2024, yeah. it's like it's, it's very eye opening as far as what is possible. Because I, like I said, like there, there's just especially coding things. Like I just. You, you, I just have not spent the amount of time needed that AI right. has helped me to be like, no, you should just do this part. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, th thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate the, the help. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I had a, a UI fix that I was doing yesterday. And I'm like, all right, Chad GPT, uh, here's the code. I need this to behave in a different way. And it's yep. like, oh, uh, you actually gave me the wrong file. Uh, I need this other file. Uh, actually, you don't even need to give it to me. Just include this subroutine in it. <laughs> right, so, okay. <laughs> uh, worked first time, so... Yep. yep. It's crazy. It's insane. And like you said, yeah. I mean, this has happened within the last year. Like, literally yeah. within the last year, it's accelerated so much. But on the other side, because this is, this is something we talk about, um, uh, th this will be featured on what's called the MC Show. Um, the, the, what we've developed this web series about is we look on the backside of the gaming industry as much as we possibly can, whether it's the business decisions, whether it's it, mainly the business decisions. <laughs> and what we've seen um, on things like a Steam is there's a, a group of coders and developers who are just having AI develop it from A to Z. The writing, the graphics, the music, and they're just typing in what they need, and they're mass uploading these. They're uploading yeah. these by the hour. Has that came across your mind? Of That's what you're competing against when you're <laughs> developing your own game? <laughs> I'm developing like more of a framework than a specific game okay so like once you have that story you can take it from a text adventure and put it into a first person shooter uh, you can put it into a multiplayer uh, it's developing the stories and the world it's it's more directing than implementation oh uh, 
like it used to be back in the day ideas were easy execution is hard it's like oh i want a full open world thing with yeah. dynamic music and, and factions and yeah and that was hard and now it's just like okay oh what do you want it to look like uh, oh. <laughs> you know like you're there's going to be people going more to high level concepts yeah and you know directing than uh, actually doing, doing the, the thing Huh, that's deep, Kevin. That's deep. Because something, <laughs> something. Yeah, you could just take Cyberpunk and make a multiplayer then. You could. You yeah. literally could. And, you and could say, make this multiplayer. And then you come back in three hours. I mean, somebody else has done it before. <laughs> right, right, right. The the big game right now, Helldivers. Somebody just put Star Wars mods into it. And I'm sure it, it, there was some AI type of logic in there of if it's the suit if it's you know what i mean the sound oh, that it's making yeah. like i'm sure there was something to accelerate that because the game's been out i don't know less than a year so yeah <laughs> i'm not saying that. that there aren't 3d models of stormtroopers exactly being available yeah. since the probably 90s so <laughs> very true very true but the other side and i i feel like that's what you were kind of alluding to like being the director and being the the person who who pulls the levers is I, I still think being a true creative has not died or it's it's far from dying of, of having I ain't gonna say original ideas, but an idea that is, is truly your passion, truly what you've been imagining, truly what you've been sketching in your notebook since you were a kid. Like yeah. people, it's it's hard to recreate originality. And I've noticed that just in my journey so far with being a creative and building my audience is like, it, it's been easy to stand out from, like I said, the people who are uploading 30 games a month with <laughs> A to Z, you know, AI created things on it. So it's cool that you are creating a product like that. Is this going to be something you're going to sell or is this going to be something free? Oh, uh, God, no. I mean, I didn't come up with the idea. GPT did. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to get I'm trying to get a process going that other people can use. Yeah. Because uh, you know, you have experiences, we all have experiences and they create stories in our brain and we like to tell them to people and people mm -hmm. like to experience those stories. Yep. That is video games, that's movies, that's music, that is everything. Yeah. You know, these things that have been around for at least 10,000 years. Yeah, we're always going to accumulate spirit experiences. We're always going to want to tell other people about them. Is it going to be the best game? No, some people's lives are just dumb. That's that's fine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> some people's store ideas are not okay. Yeah. That's also fine. Yeah. You know, or not popular or whatever. Right, right. <laughs> I can absolutely see like a blockbuster game in like three years from now, just like one 14-year-old. Like, this is the world. This is uh, how it goes. You know, I, I don't have uh, $128 million yeah. to hire my riggers and my art designs, and uh, but I know what I'm choosing. And I'm just going to do it by themselves for a few months and probably get something amazing. That is, that is probably very accurate. We've already had similar games, not be blockbusters, but do well on the internet that have generative aspects in it whether it's the environment whether it's you know what i mean the character the ai's walking around like yeah. we've already yeah. seen glimpses of larger companies taking shortcuts where they're like let's yeah. just let's just go ahead and just throw that to the ai to let him do that real quick for <laughs> us and but we still have that that big budget so i i definitely agree with that if a 14 year old ends up making some crazy game off of some AIs that he he put together and and it's still a, a crazy good concept that's better than the large companies yeah. I'm taking it. Well, I mean, you're not just competing with other games. You're competing with movies. You're competing yeah. with television yep. series. You're yep. competing with Facebook. You're com yep. Your attention is the only thing wow. you're looking for here. Dang. Um, so, yeah, you just got to be better than everything. You got to be better than everything. <laughs> Dang, man. I, I hope, look, I hope the Aspire creators out there hear that again, man. You, you got to be better than everything because yeah. there's game companies that's uploading 30 games a month. Same, yeah. with, same with YouTubers. Same with yeah. rappers. Same with, like, there's people that are just dumping content on the internet. And 
<laughs> Being I able- used to upload about 30 pieces a month. That was- <laughs> hey, we, we know, we know what you, you had a purpose. You had a purpose. I did. On, I was, on I was filling a void. <laughs> yeah, you had a purpose. There's people that are, yeah. are uploading songs that have nothing to do about anything on the internet. So we tried yeah. to predict the game of the year for 2024. We, we did, a, we uploaded a oh. video um, right at the end of 2023. Um, trying to predict what we think the game of the year is for 2024. So for us, I- I'm gonna ask you, you yours. What's your prediction? <laughs> You're gonna <laughs> have I, to give me a list because yeah, I don't know. Yeah, what's yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm gonna give you what we did our framework on. So okay, we went back to see what all game of the years have won so far. It's your very story driven games with adventure tied to it. That has been like historical. Literally the last like decade or so most game of the years have a very good story very good adventure and what i added to it was that it's usually mythical it's not something that's based off of ohio right. or texas like it's, <laughs> it's something that right. is a completely made up world so that's kind of been our prediction is it will be an adventure game like i said it will, it will be some sort of good story behind it and it will be in a, a fictitious world so based off of that you like you said you've been playing cyberpunk most of this year like is there a game this year that you could predict like it doesn't have to be a specific game it could just be like i said it could just be that framework because it's impossible for us to just say like that will be the game like okay so uh i believe in september of this year there's a game called like adventures of the shire or something like that coming out heard of it yep uh which is set in a fantasy thing mythic stuff checks all the boxes and it is not going to be game of the year <laughs> yes <laughs> like, but i don't know is gta coming out I, I don't even know gta is is supposedly coming out 2025 or 2026 so they they might miss 2024 yeah <laughs> they might miss they might miss <laughs> everything yeah yeah if yeah. you can get a gta light game out you know using them. the new tools by the end of the year that might do it <laughs> <laughs> maybe that would accelerate there maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe they should uh, start working a little harder I yeah yeah <laughs> see the thing about rockstar if, if you're the head of head game producer they just mm-hmm. hand you a budget of quadrillion <laughs> 10 yes. million bajillion dollars and they're like please get this return for us within the next decade thank you where do you even start yeah. from that <laughs> starting point like that's that that does take a, a five year six year development okay we'll keep that in mind we'll keep that in mind, we'll keep I, that I, in mind. I, I do not listen to me i'm not really hooked into that side of the games industry yeah. so yeah no we'll we'll keep that in mind because we, we've been taking it from from everywhere on just what what does it take to make a game of the year because Mm. The, the the biggest statement where we made was it's usually a large gaming studio. Mm. So we're trying to yeah. figure out, you know what I mean? What is what is their thought process when they go into it? Like, this will be the game of the year. Why do we care if it's game of the year? We don't. We absolutely don't. But like, when it comes to... I don't know de- where this... When yeah. it comes to debates and when it comes to comparing games there's still a large amount of gamers that do hold tight to that game of the year gets dropped in those conversations where your your game didn't win game of the year like mine did right (laughs) it's like oh no i only worked on hogwarts or Mm -hmm. something or did that win exactly it it did not win it did not win it had a rough start it had a rough start so Uh, how many people not how well i mean how many copies sold matters but how many people are playing yeah that is the metric by which you should measure the success of whatever you're doing a hundred percent a hundred percent a hundred percent like yeah uh was it death stranding i mean great game but uh kind of exhausting yeah maybe <laughs> <laughs> i don't know yeah, yeah. That, that and, and those are the type of games like you really don't like they probably knew it wouldn't be some sort of game of the year conversation but it was important <laughs> to the mission they were trying to push or it was important to the I don't know, like we like the the unique game style we're trying to push. Like it was just 
it, it, it could have been that thought process and not like you were saying, like, who cares about game of the year? Like we're okay, making, yeah. we're making this, <laughs> but okay. Well, we'll, I think we'll include that when we, when we make our end of the year conversation about, <laughs> about games. Kevin McLeod the says, who cares? Yeah, who yeah Nobody cares? wants to hear that. <laughs> you're, you're, for sure. I, but I'm really like, I, I, cause there are a lot of people who are very, you know, it, money or awards. Yeah. Like these are the things that matter. Yep. And I uh, like I don't know how many people are playing it. Even you could think of it just as your own like company or business of like I'm I'm able to pay my workers. I'm able to we're able to have staff meals on Saturdays and <laughs> <laughs> we are doing everything we're supposed to do right now and still make Absolutely. Them- I, I really wanted to just ask you a couple more questions on you just being a creative. This journey is not easy. And like me just being a small creator, I'm I'm in a lot of different things right now. But the, the, this gaming thing kind of came just from I, I just really wanted to keep working at it, keep getting better at it. And eventually here I am with my small pie of the Internet, which has been very cool. But, you know, I, I realize a lot of people haven't even made it to what half that I've made it to the effort they've put in, whether that's the ideas there they've been thinking of, whether it's just their own personal battles they've been trying to overcome of not being in front of a camera or, you know, Mm. speaking well or whatever it is. So, you know, what, what tips have you shared to people that have asked you straight up, Hey, Kevin, like I'm a producer. How do I get to your level? Like, I'm trying to get there one day. I don't know. How much anger do you have? (laughs) Do you have a lot of anger? Because you're going to need some fuel. And if you look at other people's stuff and you can say, I don't like that. I bet you I can do it better. Then you're, you're going to go, you're going to get there. Yeah. So uh, use your anger and identify things that suck. <laughs> I like that. That I was like probably it. <laughs> yeah, whatever. That's, that's what I, I like I that. No, that's, that's good. That's good. I, I will say like when I first got started, one of the first things to me was quality. I felt like my quality wasn't there. I was using like an old webcam. I was using a mic that I found on Amazon for cheap. And that's where I was telling people that's just getting started where I'm like, like I knew what I had to get to. And I think that was, that probably was what was in me was anger. Where I was looking at other creators, like he is not funny. Like he is not entertaining. Like there we go. And he just has a good mic and camera. Speaking of good mic. Uh, doesn't even matter anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I've done some recordings with like my professional mic, and I just like threw my iPhone in the back of the desk and hit record. <laughs> you know, it's innovative. There's a monitor in between me. It's clearly not going to get anything good. And then yeah. I just took that and threw it through the AI cleany uppy thing. Wow. And that mu- those mics are real close. Wow. I can't do it because I don't have the gear. That's just lies right now. It is. It's, it's an excuse. <laughs> At this point, May 12, 2024, it's an excuse. That is, that is <laughs> lies. Yeah. Because, I mean, there, there's content creators that's coming up right now off of just, just their, like you said, just an iPhone. Like, yeah. they don't even have a camera gear. They don't even have an editor. They're just posting straight off of their iPhone and building <laughs> yep. an internet audience. Like, it's happening daily right now. So the other side of this, I'm very big in taking breaks. Like, I am like, <laughs> if you ask me, like, what I'm doing on a Sunday afternoon, I instantly reply back, absolutely nothing. Do you do anything to to bring that zen back? That's been the word I've been liking to use is, is how do you, how does Kevin get his zen? Because... I'm sure you can agree. (laughs) (laughs) What is it like to get your your creative energy back? If you're convinced that something needs to be done, if I'm convinced that something needs to be done, no breaks. Okay. Okay. For for years on end. Wow. (laughs) Like. Wow. I don't recommend that. I mean, <laughs> normally you have to take medication when you get to that level. Right, right, of, right. It's like, you know, I might die in my sleep tonight <laughs> and this isn't done yet. And I still got to keep working. I still got to keep doing it. Um, but as now, I like, I just switch context uh, yeah. quite often. Yep. So, you know, I'll go do musical stuff for a while and then I'll go, oh, I need to change the lighting in this room. Yeah. 
okay, we'll solve that problem. And then it's like, oh, okay, I've got, you know, friends. Are, and then, I mean, I always love finding problems and finding solutions to them. Yeah. And uh, I don't, I don't think I take a break from that even on a Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> it's I, it's, like, it's, it's, my it's, lemonade is too warm. <laughs> How can I fix that? How can I fix that? Okay. It is hard to turn your brain off as a, as an extreme creative. It, it is very hard to yeah. be like, okay, I'm just going to not do anything. Cause I mean, I help with, I, I help with social media accounts. Like I'm, yeah. I'm doing a lot of like editing just on my phone if I'm not in front of my computer. So like, okay. there is times where like, I'm, I'm not even at my workstation and I'm still 100% working. I don't think it's, I don't think that the way we're doing it is a good way. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yes. I, <laughs> I don't think it is, you know, I, I mean, I'd, I'd maybe just have brain problems and that's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for what that's worth <laughs> but I, um, I would say like switching context though is like like mm -hmm. i i feel like you probably can agree is you know there's projects that would take less energy that you could knock out real quick yeah, yeah. And I, I feel like that's helped me a lot is like okay i've been working on this two hour edit okay let like you said what the yeah. lighting in here is weird. Let me, <laughs> let me go over here and do that real quick. Oh, I gotta go outside and trade in the squirrels. They're not yeah. quite they're not quite coming up to me here. And that can take a couple hours training a squirrel. Yeah. So <laughs> what would be your first step? What would be your first step? You probably have to get it like something really good, like I don't know, like the biggest peanuts you could find or something. Yeah, yeah, you get a bag of peanuts. You you start throwing them out there, you know, far enough away under a tree so they feel safe, and then you keep throwing them there you slightly go. less far. <laughs> there you go. And then eventually you can just hand them the peanut. See, you just saw you solved that. You just solved that in less than <laughs> twenty seconds. Or you've thought about this, Rand. No, I've done it. <laughs> oh my god! Look, more more than we've known about Kevin today. <laughs> this is going to be my third before. season of squirrel training. <laughs> before we before I hop into Glad we're talking about video games. Right, oh, okay. right. Back to the <laughs> before I hop into the Discord questions. Hmm. Um, I I, I just want to give you your credit um to for the royalty free stuff um because i me personally i mean music is just music is, is everything to me I, I listen to music on a daily like while i'm doing stuff it's playing in the background when i'm driving to places like music is everything even to the point of a content creator you put it in the back of your vlogs your your gaming videos anything yep. so i definitely definitely had to give you your credit for that and and just going back to that first question i asked you is like as a as a legacy right now like you're, you're definitely on the cusp of legacy like where yeah. people are gonna say like he was the he was the one who started all this stuff so like is it even considered a legacy to you at this point like is there still more work that needs to be done <laughs> like what 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 does the what does kevin look like a hundred a hundred plus years from now uh, yeah i think i will be like as long as media of this era exists I, there'll be something of me that lives on yeah yeah because it's just in so many places mm -hmm. uh i've thought about that i'm i'm pretty happy about that that's good that's um, good your ears yeah no i <laughs> i'll be one of the be one of the last human unaided composers yeah yes like, no this just came from my brain and i played it into a piano and here's the microphone and that's what we get yeah people are always going to play music people are always going to make their new music but they're going to be doing it for themselves they're not going to be doing it to get rich yep they're going to do it because it's fun yep and you know they'll they'll tell stories because it's fun to tell stories so they, like they'll make games and stories and games are going to be you know, interactive in the future. Yeah. You know, we go up to the, you know, Star Trek future. We got holodecks. Yep. That's fine. You can just <laughs> load in a book and go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm glad you, you're definitely have thought about that. And like you said, you, your, your, your slice of the internet is, is forever there for sure. Cause yeah. I, I have to say like what you've done has been it, it, very impactful for a lot, a lot of people, YouTube pages. Like, like I said, I, I knew of your music, before I knew of you like that, oh, yeah. Yeah. that is I, I feel like that should say everything because once people find out who you are 
it's like, <laughs> like oh, literally, guy. I was like, <laughs> no way. Like it was so it was very, very cool to to really realize that. So moving into the Discord questions. Um, I, I just typed in here. If y'all could ask Kevin McLeod anything, what would it be? First question, what's your favorite all-time game outside of Cyberpunk? Since we found outside that out outside of Cyberpunk. Yeah, since we found that out in this conversation. Outside of Cyberpunk, what's your favorite game? Do harder than you think. Uh, <laughs> um, because there's so many different kinds of games. There's like the there 8-bit games I remember from my childhood, and they're useful for those memories. Are they <laughs> yeah, good games? Yeah. No, no, yeah, they're not. Yeah, yeah. They, were the start. <laughs> they were just the start of a good game. <laughs> they were, you know, you know, Galaga that you could play for three seconds for 25 cents or whatever that was <laughs> back then. Um, and then you've got games like uh, Banjo-Kazooie and Tetrisphere for the Nintendo 64. Oof. I'm going to have to go, though, like the most amount of joy that I've gotten out of a game, period, is Mario Kart Double Dash. Ooh! <laughs> when did that come? When did that come out, though? A long time yeah. ago. <laughs> it wow. is weirdly enough still playable. Some things are not from that wow. era. Wow, that's a good choice. That's a good yeah. choice. <laughs> it is the only choice I have All because right. I am old. <laughs> I literally had two people ask, "Who is Kevin McLeod?" But I think they're asking it in the sense of like, if you had to give an elevator pitch right now. Of who is Kevin McLeod? <laughs> 10 seconds, 15 seconds. Who is Kevin McLeod? Uh, I've been described as uh, Willy Wonka chaotic good uh, <laughs> thing. Um, I, I write music, I play music, I share music. It's mostly the philosophies that I'm known for because there are much better producers out there <laughs> than me. But Nobody gives this stuff away for free. I'm the guy who gives it away for free and who has never sued anybody. Appreciate Fingers that. <laughs> right, right, right. Not yet, not yet. Uh, somebody asked, what's your favorite dinosaur? <laughs> oh, a patasaurus. Okay. I mean, they're just... They're just so giant. Yeah. That's um, cool. Yeah. I was a really big Jurassic Park fan and... Like mm -hmm. I had, I used to have nightmares of a T-Rex. Like I used to like wake up <laughs> in my sleep. Like, <gasps> my, and my second favorite dinosaur is a chicken. So that's a dinosaur. Chickens are dinosaurs. What? <laughs> Look, I'm gonna have to fact check that one after this. That's interesting. Uh, they're, they're avian dinosaurs. Yeah. That's interesting. Well, we'll let people <laughs> argue about that exactly right, 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 uh, right, they're descended right. from dinosaurs direct okay. line of descent uh last question what inspired you in the first place to make original instrumentals because i know we we talked about your oh. anger but yeah, yeah was there something that initially was like oh i want to do something like that yeah not, not really anything in particular it's just i was already doing it and there was you know the world wide web had just hit Yep. And <laughs> um and I could. And, cool. and I thought that there would be, you know, hundreds and thousands of people going away from the like the standard model of copyright, label, publisher, and into this new way where you can just it's just here. Yeah. Uh some people have, but I expected by now it would be fully half of all music, but it, it's a fraction of a percent wow. but with the ai now you don't have <laughs> to have 10 years experience at of all playing an instrument <laughs> you just have to have the idea of what you want to hear yep. and then you can put together your own albums to play in your own uh living room on tiki night i don't know what you do <laughs> in your living room whatever <sighs> and then you, you can share those with people and should be good. It should be good. We should be getting the best music, like the best games, the best everything. Very. It's very on the way. We already it's have, the, yeah, like the best games of all time because that's how time works. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Yep. <laughs> but like we just said, like GTA, like I mean, GTA will be when whenever it does release, it will be the best ever of whatever that will be. That is it for me, Kevin. Once again, 
I appreciate you pulling up. Like I said, this is what we call the MC show. You're actually the first guest we have had on the MC show. So oh. you are now a part of our internet history. Of- yes. <laughs> you are Nowhere to go but off. <laughs> exactly. Good choice. <laughs> exactly.